You know, they say nurses are they everything, aren't they? <laughs> Carers, uh, housewives, cake decorators, repairers. <laughs> they do everything, don't they? My hobby is gardening flowers. You probably see where my flowers are at the front. Since I've been in London, when I started having children, I did cake decorating. You know, you get a little bit more domesticated. I am just going to put the marzipan onto the cake. I've covered it over with some honey. When I joined the hospital staff, I was the only black nurse. We had a, a matron called um, Mrs. Postlethwaite and <laughs> she was like a mother. And the, the reason is, because you're underaged, they become surrogate mothers to you. I started my training in Christchurch and I stayed down there for three and a half years. All I wanted to know is there were some other black people there, and there were. What used to happen is, when you arrive, they would uh, get some of the girls who were there before you to sort of uh, get you to familiarise yourself with the place. I think eventually there was about nine of us all together in, in the hospital from various Caribbean islands. We formed a good community. In the evenings we used to get together. We got close, we supported each other, you know, and even in the classroom. You know, we look out for each other. Because I came to the hospital where there was, you know, we didn't have to look for accommodation, it was there for us and everything. And we had a home sister who was like a mum to us, so any problems we went to them. All the consultants were sort of an older men, and they were like your, your father, your dad. It was like a little family on the ward. Everybody got on. We were cosmopolitan, and everybody got on. With me as a nurse, I think from my church background, the caring bit, that sort of uh, enhances it. We've got this uh, small group and we meet every Thursday. Not Sometimes we don't meet just for, you know, praying, and but we meet socially as well. When I was doing the first part of my training at Christchurch, one thing that really upset me, I was, I was on night duty and then I had to go come on in the evening to start theatres and they, there was nobody there with me, I was on my own. All they did was leave me a note of the work I was supposed to do. I was just lucky, you know, you hear, you hear nurses complaining that, you know, because they were the black nurse, they will push them into the menial jobs and stuff. But I was very lucky to come across people who were fair. There was two ward sisters. <clears throat> and one used to, um, well, I'm usually on this sister's um, um, rusted turn, and uh, she always sends me first thing. Everybody else is getting the report, but she would send me into the sluice to go and tidy up, you know, and wash the bedpans, and you have to polish the bedpans till you see your face in it. So each morning she was on, I used to go off to the sluice and never went in, never heard the report, but I had to come out and get my work and I was supposed to know what was going on. I remember one nurse, another student nurse, a white nurse it was, asking me, in my country, do we eat with knives and forks? Although there was on the line, you know, you, you could feel it, but it wasn't... It wasn't blatant. And things like uh, you were told, if you say good morning to the sister and she don't answer, don't worry, it's because she was preoccupied. Rubbish. <laughs> but that, that's how it was. 